Hi, hello, welcome back to BLR Knowledge Center. In this today's session, we'll talk about the difference of SOA and microservices. In the earlier sessions, we talk about SOA and microservices. And in this session, we'll talk about a little bit on differences between these two uh, mechanisms. So SOA, I think uh, we already uh, told that it is service-oriented architecture, which defines a way to make software components reusable and interoperable via service interfaces. So it defines, you know, the, to make software components reusable and service oriented. That is what the main, you know, concept of service oriented architecture, right? And coming to the microservices. So it is a microservices are decentralized and run on different servers, but uh, they still work together for an application. So as I mentioned, microservices are uh, small services which are going to be decoupled from the uh, you know, use service like monolithic service and can be deployed independently on different servers. That is what are decentralized and run on different servers, but they still work together for an application if they require a runtime. So ideally each microservice serves a single function which enables simple routing between uh, different services with API communication. Right, so <clears throat> when it comes to these differences, before we get into differences of these SOA and microservices, just look at the evolution of software architecture. And initially, we used to have monolithic, and then we migrated and moved to um, service oriented architecture, and then now we are in the phase of microservices. So, in the monolithic uh, services or monolithic kind of application implementation. So things are, everything is being implemented on the single application and single page and single service. This monolithic architecture works on a single page application layer that brings together all functionalities required with architecture. So it is the simplest form of architecture because it does not involve any, you know, uh, many actors as other architecture styles. It's simple having UI and access control and business stuff, and this is the data stuff. And that's it. This all comes under a single page, a single uh, you know UI, and a single screen. We have everything. So once I come up, I'm coming from UI and with some event is connected to access controller, and then it connects to business layer or business logic, and then it's connected to data layer or database, and then it gives back to UI. So things are happening on a single page, and it doesn't have any uh, many actors uh, as other. You know, kind of stuff uh, having in the different architectures. So this monolithic model works perfectly for a small and uh, you know, mid-sized architectures and keeps the complications quite low. The problem usually appears when the architecture needs to scale up uh, feature-wise since the models are essentially dependent upon each other here, like access control, business logic, data layer, all are uh, you know, the, uh, fully coupled. So they are depending, you know, each and every component here, meet, you know, tightly coupled and having a dependency with uh, each other. So when it comes to any change or the scale up of a feature, uh, since the modules are extensively dependent, um, so it has a lot of problems and impacts when you wanted to make any change for any specific area using monolithic. There it comes service oriented architecture, um, where it has, you know, kind of uh, uh, incorporating uh, functions like uh, small and mid-sized applications and try to keep the complexity of each application very low and make them communicate more asset APIs using uh, HTTP webs, right? So this is what the uh, next version of services, um, service oriented architecture, where, so we used to have a mobile app differently and we have a messaging uh, 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 communication here transport communication so here i have services so it is connecting to this service and it is connecting to this service either of any way either of any case we have a transport layer in between service and ui and that is going to validate the uh, request coming from ui and then it hits to the service which actually having individual functionality and deploying on different servers and then it is fetching data from the data layer and gives back to the application. So here, a service was separate deployment and a UI was separate deployment. 
right? When it comes to monolithic, everything being deployed as a single uh, server, but here when it comes to service oriented, we'll be deploying in different servers. Uh, services are in different server, and this um, UI part was in different services. And it also having some problems in the service oriented architecture. And that's kind of stuff to avoid that. So microservices capabilities are expressed formally with business oriented APIs. They compress root business ability, which are priced assets to the business. The execution of the services, which might require integration with systems or record. So in the recent times, microservice architecture or simple microservices has become quite popular. To put into simple terms, microservice is a characteristics method of developing software systems and applications as a suit of independently deployable, small and modular services in which each service runs on distinct process and communicates through a well-defined lightweight mechanism to serve standardizing you know on contracts uh, uh, expressed through business oriented apis so this microservices are having uh, separate deployments and separate you know uh, process like uh, each microservices having capabilities of expressing the formally the business oriented APIs here like this, and it is individually deployed and can achieve and can execute the functionality and give back response to UI. So here we have different layers, hence it is more uh, scalable vertically and horizontally, and it is more performant when compared to these two services. When it comes to next picture, we broadly look at this. So what is this the differences having in uh, service oriented architecture and a microservice ar architecture. So basically service oriented architecture is having, these are the attributes. If you look at the diagrams, as SOE architecture attributes and right side so we have microservices architecture. SOE architecture having services or APIs and then we have application and application server, managed runtime and environment, operating system, hypervisor and storage network and then hardware. And when it comes to microservices, we have only managed runtime environment, operating system, hypervisor, storage network. No, we don't have any application or application server because microservices are being uh, installed uh, a separate server and we don't need any application server. But ideally, they still work together for an application requirement. So each microservices is a single function which enables simple routing between uh, different services. Okay. So <clears throat> microservices is having its own uh, server. Hence, we don't have application application server here. In microservice architecture, um, services own their data. The services database is part of its implementation and it is private. So the data is exposed indirectly via the services APIs. So hence, it doesn't require any application or application server here. And manage the runtime environment anyway, we, we, we definitely require it to uh, configure the managed runtime part and operating system also required, whether you are deploying it on OS, Windows or Unix or Linux or something. And hypervisor, it's a kind of you know, VM, so where you can deploy your you know, service. And we definitely require storage space based on the API size and endpoints count and network is definitely required to access um, in the over, in, I mean, over internet and hardware also required uh, to kind of get connected to uh, microservices. So these are the, the, uh, some of the differences between SOE and microservices except application, application server, all the other things are uh, very common. And uh, like, you know, as I mentioned, even it is a monolithic also, we uh, have a similar kind of uh, no, uh, attributes, but only these two things are varying between microservices and uh, SOA. Okay. So in the recent times, microservices architecture or simple microservices has become quite popular because it doesn't have any dependency with application and application servers. Okay. So this is all about the difference between uh, uh, microservices and SOA architecture. Uh, thanks for listening to this video. I hope you understand the differences of microservices and SOA. Uh, please subscribe this channel for more videos on this uh, .NET topics. Thank you.